welcome back to Aging Well, a monthly production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb. Our topic today is health and wellness for older adults. And we have a couple of really qualified expert uh, folks in the studio today to talk about these topics with us. Um, shall we introduce ourselves? Hi, um, um, my, I'm Jeannie Lydon. I'm the director of the Adult Family Care Program, also a nurse, and I will be a uh, coach in the Diabetes Management Program. Oh, excellent. Hi, my name is Andrea Savardstrom. I'm a registered dietitian and I work at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Oh, excellent. And we're actually going to start off with diet and nutrition uh, to start. Uh, we're going to talk about malnutrition in older adults, which is one of your areas of expertise. Uh, so I guess to start out a little bit, malnutrition in older adults, is this a fairly prevalent issue? Definitely is. I think it's a very important topic. I'm glad to have this opportunity to get more increased awareness about it. Um, malnutrition in the elderly is definitely growing with the increase in the aging population. So with that comes the increase in the prevalence of malnutrition. Um, the body changes so much naturally with age, which, which puts older adults at greater risk. Mm. So it's even more important to be aware. It often goes undiagnosed and untreated and can lead to other health problems. So it's really important to get it diagnosed and treated early to prevent that from happening. Uh, many people in the community or rehabs, nursing homes, um, are admitted to hospitals already malnourished, but like I said before, unfortunately it doesn't often get um, treated initially. So about um, in hospitals about 40 percent are malnourished. Um, in rehab centers they estimate about 50 percent are malnourished. Mm. Um, in nursing homes, about 67% are malnourished or at risk of malnutrition, which wow. is pretty high. Um, and then in the community, it's about 38% are malnourished or at risk for malnutrition. So I had no idea. It's just... definitely out there and growing. <clears throat> so what are some of the causes of this issue? Mm -hmm. um, there's many causes. It can be a lot of, like I mentioned before, the physical changes. Um, that occur with the body with age, um, socioeconomic changes, environmental, so a lot of factors go into that. I do want to uh, mention just malnutrition in general, what it is, is um, can be overnutrition or undernutrition, so taking in too much or too little mm. of um, certain nutrients, protein, calories, uh, vitamins and minerals um, that have an adverse effect on your body. So I think we often think about you know, low weight, not eating enough, but can also be on the other end of doing too much of something or not enough of the right things, and that can have adverse effects on the body. So um, some, of the um, some of the causes that um, older adults deal with are low appetite, um, and there's different reasons for that that we'll go through as well. Changes in the body's ability to process and absorb nutrients mm. um, decreases with age. So that's another factor. Um, use of multiple medications, many medications out there that um, can decrease appetite mm -hmm. or inhibit absorption of certain nutrients, so that affects their um, nutrition status. Mm -hmm. um, access to food, um, whether it be financially or physically being able to access food, shop for food, um, prepare food, transportation to get food, so mm -hmm. another factor. Um, changes again with the body with age is to decrease sense of taste and smell which can affect appetite as well. Um, poor oral health, difficulty chewing food also has some limitations on what people can take in. Um, difficulty swallowing or dysphagia is another concern for older adults. Um, loss of vision or hearing like being able to read or labels, see packages, open packages, just um, hands-on with the food. Um, and then physical function, reduced physical function. Mm -hmm. So again, mobility, getting food, preparing food, so just less able to access that food again. Um, depression, um, and then different chronic diseases, um, social isolation, I could keep going, there's very many. So there's the a lot of causes. I want to go back to something you said in mm -hmm. there that was kind of interesting. You said you think of somebody who uh, has a low body weight, um, and that's what I think of when I think of mal malnourished, mm -hmm. but you also indicated that you can be receiving a lot of food, mm -hmm. I think, in being malnourished. So can you be obese and, mal and malnourished? That absolutely, yep. So that's the other mm -hmm. end of it. You mm -hmm. can 
definitely be obese or overweight and still be malnourished. You're just not taking in the right amounts or types of foods um, to, be, to nourish your body well. You might be eating all sugars or the wrong types of foods, mm -hmm. too much of that, and you're missing out on the important nutrients that your body needs. Because mm -hmm. especially with aging and those changes, you do need more mm -hmm. of certain nutrients, um, like protein and folate and different vitamins and calcium, vitamin D, that you do need more of as, with age. And if you're not getting those right nutrients, regardless of your weight, you can still be malnourished. It's interesting. So it's it's quality. In some ways, it's quality instead of quantity. Exactly. And I kind of had a misconception there because mm -hmm. I thought it was more of a quantity. Yeah. So weight isn't always the f only factor to look at. So there's so there's a lot of different factors. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some ways that you can ID those who are at risk? Say sure. you're somebody who's concerned about somebody else. Um, yeah. There's definitely some. Um, signs to look for to, if people are malnourished or at risk for being malnourished. We did talk about weight. Yeah, being low weight is definitely one. It's involuntary, unintentional weight loss. It's not somebody trying to lose weight on purpose, but if they lose weight unintentionally over a certain amount over time, it's usually about 10% um, over six months or 5% of your body weight in one month. So if someone's like 150 pounds, if they lose seven to eight pounds in one month unintentionally, that's a a good sign that they're heading towards malnutrition. Mm. Um, the body mass index, which is the BMI, if it's less than 18, which is a calculation we do to um, using height and weight to see which, if you're in a healthy um, weight range. So if you're low, that's another sign that we look at for malnutrition. Mm. Um, different chronic diseases they may have puts them at greater risk, whether it's renal, which is kidney disease, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, different diseases they're going through can put them at risk as well. Mm. Um, as I mentioned before, needing more of certain nutrients, if they're not meeting that, mm. they can be malnourished. Uh, if they're on a special diet due to those special, um, those um, chronic diseases they have, it limits them and restrictions, so they might not be getting as much as well. Mm. Um, physical signs, loss of um, subcutaneous fat, which is like hollow temples, um, bags under the eyes, you can see the clavicle bone. So there's certain physical um, assessments that can be done as well. Mm -hmm. um, loss of muscle and bone mass, um, and just like that low function, like mobility too. Absolutely, so there's definitely signs. So you've mentioned some of the signs and the prevalence. What are some of the health outcomes of malnutrition? As I mentioned, this often goes undiagnosed um, and untreated, which can lead to many other health consequences. Um, it can affect your brain and like cognition. Um, well, again, the loss of lean muscle. If you're not getting enough protein and calories, mm. you lose your, your muscle, which happens naturally with age, but it can happen a lot quicker and sooner and have a greater effect if not treated early. Um, a low immune system, so you mm. get sick more often, um, increased risk of infection. Low, poor wound healing is a really big sign too of poor nutrition too. So that's another one to look for. Um, increased hospital stays or frequent admissions to hospital is um, another concern that can happen if it's left untreated. Mm -hmm. um, and overall dependence on others, reduced quality of life, just overall can lead to a lot of other health consequences. Absolutely. When it comes to preventing it, um, I suppose eating is one way that part of the equation, yeah. but what are some of the ways to prevent? There's, oh, again, there's many ways. Um, so we do have certain, um, I mean, diet definitely is the one thing and meeting with the dietitian or definitely discussing this with a, your doctor, primary care, mm -hmm. um, but meeting with the dietitian as well. So the whole team can help support to um, treat this early and come up with dietary intervention and ways to increase calories, proteins, and vitamins and minerals to adequate amounts to prevent that further weight loss mm -hmm. and help them um, regain their strength. Um, we also have at the agency ourselves, we have many supports in place to help people who are um, you know, having challenges with access to food. Uh, we have the home delivered meal program that we have at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. So we provide meals delivered to the client, to the person's home. Mm. You can get a hot meal, frozen meal, cold supper meal, which comes with a sandwich. 
Um, so a variety of options, and we also have special diet ones, so if you need um, like carb control for diabetics, we have a cardiac heart healthy menu, we have um, what people who have kidney disease, we have one specific for their needs, we have different textures for mm -hmm. people with the chewing and swallowing difficulties, like I mentioned, so like a pureed ground. And also, your position at the agency is very much mm -hmm. involved with uh, helping people with malnutrition. That's yeah. definitely something I want to feature yeah. in our next segment. Mm -hmm. and so that's what I do as a registered mm -hmm. dietitian. I do in-home nutrition counseling. So that's another option available as well. Absolutely. Um, we also have congregate lunch centers because I mentioned like the social isolation is a big part of uh, poor nutrition. So getting out and socializing, having a nice meal mm -hmm. with a group and participating in different activities or exercises. Mm -hmm. So that option is there too. We have different locations around Somerville and Cambridge. Oh, that's excellent. Um, and another, just one more thing that we have that really helps with people with poor appetite, not taking enough calories or protein, is we also provide Ensure nutrition drink supplements through our office at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. So it's sold by the case, which is usually a better cost mm -hmm. than purchasing it at the pharmacy. So we have the Ensure, we have Ensure Plus, and the Glucerna for diabetics. Oh, that's so there's a variety of different options to help people um, reduce the risk of malnutrition. Well, that's excellent. We'll talk a little bit more about that in our next segment. Okay. Uh, that's all for this segment of Aging Well. We'll be back in a moment. Hello and welcome back to Aging Well, a monthly production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb, and our topic today is malnutrition and healthy living. In me with the studio today is uh, SEACS dietitian, Andrea Svartsrum, and registered nurse and program manager, Jeannie Layden. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Thanks. So I was hoping in this segment that we could move on to some of the ways that our agency helps people with the issues of malnutrition, and that's like right in your wheelhouse, actually. So I was hoping you could tell me a little bit about how you help people with malnutrition in your role. Sure. I'm at being, as a registered dietitian um, and working at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services, a big part of my role is helping people make small changes and small goals over time in nutrition and healthy eating that best meets their individual needs. So I often do um, nutrition counseling in the home of our clients, which is very nice to be there face-to-face -face in their own home. They're comfortable. They have you know, all the food there. They show me. It's really a hands-on experience. So we get to you know, get some information from them. You look in the fridge and the pantry? If they, yeah, I always ask. <laughs> and they say that it's really helpful. And, they, and they're always, you know, most are just very willing. They want to learn. They want to make changes so it's healthy living. So we do nutrition counseling, we get information, and together with the, with the client in their own home, we come up with um, small goals to make these changes over time so they become you know, lifestyle habits. But depending on their individual needs, if it's just um, wanting to eat better and learn about nutrition, or if it, they're trying to lose weight, or if they're, um, many are, are new, new diabetics or been diabetics but just need a refresher, so different information to help them um, with their nutritional needs and hopefully prevent you know, them from becoming malnourished as well. Now I know we have very strict privacy requirements at our agency, but in a general sense, what are some of the most common issues you see when you're meeting with people in their home and talking about their challenges? The most common issues um, that I get referrals for are a lot of diabetics, which will work well into our next segment. Um, healthy weight, because weight is always a concern, which can also help improve other health conditions. Uh, and many just want to know more about nutrition. They just don't know a lot about it or want to learn more and make sure, see how they're doing in ways that they can probably eat healthier and um, you know, have some ideas or learn new things. Uh, many times it's um, high blood pressure, low sodium diet, I get that often as well. So those are the most frequent and main topics that I get um, for home visits for nutrition counseling. And you just meet with them once or is it sort of an ongoing? Uh, it's really based on each person and their needs. Uh, most often it's like 
uh, one time, one hour, and then like a follow-up phone call, or if another visit is needed, then I will definitely do that as well. Oh, excellent. That's really great. Mm -hmm. So that's one aspect of how we help with malnutrition, but there are several other programs um, involved at the nutrition uh, programs at our agency. Can we talk mm -hmm. a little bit about some of those? Um, yes, in, in the nutrition department, we uh, offer the home delivered meals mm -hmm. um, to clients that are unable to prepare meals at home. I guess for some of the reasons I'd mentioned before, whether it's low mobility, low function, low vision, unable to prepare food. Um, so that option is there, and that has been shown to really help people improve their nutrition and diet um, and keep them independent in their home too longer. So it's been a lot of um, positive results from the home delivered meals. Um, again, we have the congregate sites if they want to go out of their home and enjoy a nice meal in a group setting, which so socialization has been shown to have so many positive effects mm. on health as well. Uh, and we also provide transportation to that because I know that can be a concern is getting around from place to place. So if they're interested in going to one of these lunch centers, we can provide transportation. Um, we also offer a brown bag program. So once a month, the second Tuesday of each month, we have bags of groceries put together and somebody can come. It's in the Armory in Somerville on Highland Ave. And they can come pick up a bag of um, produce or gro groceries. It could be fresh, frozen, shelf stable, just a variety of things. It changes every month, mm. but it just helps people with that access to food as well. I think that, but they have to pre-register. They them. do. It's yes. not a drop in. Not exactly. Good point. Yes. They do need to register ahead of time and they can do that um, by contacting the agency and the nutrition department. I just didn't want to have a flood. No, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> but, but it's a lovely program. I've been over for the bad it is. It's been very successful. Uh, several times. And you mentioned the affordable nutrition supplement. Yes, the nutrition supplement we do offer through the nutrition department. Uh, I think it's 24 cans in a case. Um, and that can also be delivered to the person's home. If they're, not, if they're a Meals on Wheels client, then it gets delivered at no cost, but if you're not, it's a small fee, which is $2.50 delivery charge, but it can be delivered to your home if that's something you need, again, to help supplement what you're eating on a regular basis. And we just finished up probably our most popular program, mm -hmm. Nutrition. The Farmer's Market program, yep. We just did, um, it was very successful. Um, the Farmer's Market program, so that happens once a year and um, older adults in our community, Somerville and Cambridge, that we cover, receive $25 in coupons to go use at a local farmer's market. Mm -hmm. So again, it helps encourage the fruit and vegetable consumption, mm -hmm. helps support the local farmer, so it's kind of a win-win for everybody. So that's a very successful program as well. And they were distributed in July, mm -hmm. and are people calling you already about the 2018 Farmer's Market? Oh, we get calls early. <laughs> people, it's very popular. It's very popular. They do start calling, looking for them. But usually around July, we start to distribute the coupons. What's a good time for people to get in touch for next year, is um, it? You know, usually the month before June, May, June, if they want to start calling, mm -hmm. um, is a good time. We usually don't get them like physically delivered till the month of July. So that's how it's been. So it could change, but it's definitely good to start calling a couple months before. Absolutely. Well, you covered a lot of ground there. The good news is if people want to follow up and learn more about these programs, there's a lot of information about the nutrition programs mm -hmm. at our website, which has such an easy URL, even I can remember it. It's eldercare.org. And there's a nutrition page, and people can go there and learn all about these different programs, uh, which is really great. Yeah. It has all the menus, it has the list of lunch programs, the nutrition supplement information, so everything is right there. Oh, that's excellent. All right, that's it for this segment of Aging Well. We'll be right back in a moment with a segment on our Type 2 Diabetes Prevention Program. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to Aging Well, a monthly production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb. We're finishing up our show today on malnutrition and healthy living. And the final segment today is going to be our new Type 2 Diabetes Prevention Program. 
And uh, Jeannie is a registered nurse and you're one of the instructors for this program, which is starting in September. And I'm really thrilled to hear a little more about it. Okay. And I'll, I'll start by saying, although I am, am a nurse, in this program, what I am is a coach. Mm. So it's really a program, and I'll go into all the details, but it's really a program with moderate lifestyle changes mm. that a person can really prevent getting type 2 diabetes. So this is what's good. So what it is is Somerville Cambridge is off offering it. It's one of our new wellness programs. Um, we're so excited about it because it's been proven, proven, proven mm. that it will affect with moderate lifestyle changes a person can prevent getting type 2 diabetes. So this will be a year program mm. and um, it's a 26 week, 26 weeks and it starts out probably for the first four months, just uh, you meet weekly, then after that it's like um, every other week, and then it would be monthly. Mm -hmm. um, so what it is, it's a program to prevent type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. And all type 2 diabetes is, it would be chronic high blood sugars. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanna prevent that. Mm -hmm. So how do you prevent something like that? Really, you, you prevent that with moderate lifestyle changes. And what's mm -hmm. great about this program is their peer support. Mm -hmm. So we'll be a coach, you know, myself and um, Eliza, who will be running this. Um, we'll be coaches just supporting whatever is um, going to happen in this program. Mm -hmm. There will be weigh-ins. Um, but the biggest thing, okay, the, the lifestyle changes that people should be considering, um, and some, Andrea had talked, you know, eating, mm -hmm. eating and nutrition and all that. Um, so this will be encouraging moderate um, lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. And with moderate lifestyle changes, it will have a positive effect. Mm -hmm. So what kind of changes are we talking about? Um, eating healthier. Mm -hmm. Um, increasing activity and we say well we say with activity it's not going to be something I love to do mm -hmm. or you love to mm -hmm. do or what you love to do it's that individual in this program finding something that they like and for every person it's really really different for for someone it might be swimming for someone it might be sitting in a chair stretching for someone else it may be vigorous walking so whatever whatever it is it's individual what does that person like so those are, those are two things. So mm. eating, um, of course, weight. We're looking for some moderate weight loss. Mm. And how do you, like, there's a lot of tracking in this program because a lot of times you just don't think about what you put in your mouth. So mm. um, people will be encouraged by their coaches and their peers to do food tracking. Okay, what have I eaten today? Mm. What, how many calories am I going to try to have within a day? Mm. So tracking of food and activity will be a big part of this. Mm. And um, any Well, one thing I was uh, curious about, who the program is for? This program is really um, for anyone who could be pre-diabetic mm -hmm. and somebody who's overweight. So there are, there are screening things and there are requirements for this program. Mm -hmm. And so if, you're, if a doctor says that you're pre-diabetic would be one thing. Mm -hmm. um, if you are truly overweight and we do a screening, mm -hmm. which we will mm -hmm. be doing screenings, um, on September 5th at the um, Cambridge Citywide Senior Center where these classes will be held. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing, I'll actually be running, you know, be there for, for a few hours. Mm -hmm. And it's just a check off list of questions, um, you know, and it's rated by numbers and I believe it's nine or more, but people don't even have to worry about that. From the screening tool, we'll be able to ask you, you there's certain questions on it. Does diabetes run in your family? You know, how active are you? different things like that. So from that screening, we will be able to say, you know, say yes, this person is pre-diabetic pre or not. Mm -hmm. So the whole goal is to prevent type 2, which is then when, you know, uh, pre-diabetic, when you may have a high blood sugar once in a while, you know, and then it can change to uh, type 2, which is going to be a chronic high blood sugar, you know, and all kinds of um, health issues can go along with that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the screening will take place, then the classes start um, September 12th. Again, mm -hmm. there'll be our classes. We ask people to come, um, you know, uh, 15 minutes before because there will be weigh-ins and all that. 
But again, I can't stress enough, like with moderate lifestyle changes, we're not there, I'm not there to tell anyone anything. I'm not really, I'm there to present options to people mm -hmm. in this program and for them to just learn what moderate lifestyle changes can do for them in their lives. Oh, that's really excellent. And one of the things, because we've, I've been involved with this program a little bit, uh, the prevalence of prediabetes was a little shocking. The numbers from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said it was uh, one in three American adults. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that a lot of them don't know that. Has that been your experience when you? That's a, yes, definitely. And I just wanted to add also that we're talking about moderate changes. Even just a modest weight loss, can, yeah. like about 7%, say, of um, your weight can have huge health benefits. So we're not looking to like make these huge That's changes, right. but just just that small weight loss can really have positive effects on the health and preventing that type two diabetes from um, continuing and, and, and that's developing. And that's encouraging to a person it's, it's because you get goal. so overwhelmed mm. when you think, oh my goodness, I've got to lose 50 pounds or whatever, you know? Yeah. It's much less than that. And yeah, setting exactly. small goals mm. and um, that, you, that are reachable. Makes it achievable. It's and achievable. It's not out of reach, yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. Yeah, and it, just like the incidence of nutrition in elders, that's a mm. higher ratio than I would have thought. Mm. And the same thing with, you know, with this, the, the it's higher than you, you imagine. Uh, absolutely, that's definitely one thing that I've learned about it. Mm -hmm. So September, Tuesday, September 5th, starting at 1230, if you wanna go down to the Cambridge Citywide Senior Center, right. Jeannie and Eliza will be there. If you want to do the screening, that's great. Also, if you want to stop in, if you are know that you're pre-diabetic, you want to stop in and learn about the program. I've heard people can also come in and ask questions about the program. Absolutely. More if they're interested. And the screening is free. The program is free. Um, and if people want more information, they can contact Eliza by calling 617-628-2601, extension 3108. Again, that's extension 3108. And just one final repeat this has been proven to work with moderate lifestyle changes in a person's life moderate weight loss seven percent as you said mm -hmm. moderate changes in eating habits mm -hmm. moderate changes in maybe increasing a activity and there's even we do some um, coaching on how to manage stress in your lives which can be a precipitating factor for so sure. many different right. things so how do you manage stress stress and how do you really incorporate some kind of activity that you'll stick with. Mm. Um, so these moderate lifestyle changes have that, been really That group beneficial. support. And that group support yeah. is just unbelievable. And as a coach, we're the, just there to support each individual and as a peer, you know, support group, it, it, it should be awesome. So we are really excited. It's about a great it. program. Yeah, it sounds yeah. outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. I want to thank both of you for joining me in the studio today. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you much. For having us. It's been a yeah. great discussion. Mm -hmm. And I'll close on one final note today. I've mentioned the website several times during our show. Uh, Somerville Cambridge Elder Services actually has an awesome brand new website that just went live today. Uh, it is really visual and it is mobile friendly. So get out your phone, type in eldercare.org uh, and check it out. We hope you like it. Uh, this is Nathan Lamb signing off for Aging Well. We'll see you next time. Thanks again.